Hi, if you've been in the drone industry for a while, you will know that it's not about the drone, it's about the data. And in fact, it's not about the data, it's about data-driven insights. And one of the things that's really important to get to those data-driven insights is to have the data in the right format so that the end customer or client can actually use the data in the way they want to. So what are the different types of drone data formats and what do they actually mean? We'll have a look in this video. Hey everyone, I'm Varun, the founder and CEO at Hammer Missions. And in this video, we wanna talk about the different types of drone data formats and what they mean. This video was actually requested by one of our viewers, Lenart. If you're listening, thanks so much for requesting this video. We're always delighted to make videos that you request. So whilst watching this video, if you guys have any ideas on what we should cover as a next topic, please do let us know. Right, let's jump straight in. So in this video, I'm going to cover five of the most commonly found drone data formats and try to explain what those formats are, how they've come about, and what does it all mean. So let's start with data format number one, dense point cloud. So dense point cloud, or simply referred to as point cloud, is a type of data format in which the output data essentially has, as the name implies, a cloud of points. And this cloud of points is essentially a set of points that have been positioned in 3D space and have certain values attached to them. These, these essentially 3D points allow you to be able to infer certain things about the data, the shape of the data, the geometry of the data, the distances between points in the data. So what is it good for? A lot of these, these point clouds are really good for essentially uh, laser scanning applications, or it has essentially come from the laser scanning world where points have been mapped in 3D space using laser scanners because they're really good at mapping where certain objects are. And as, as you would know from laser, which is essentially shooting lights and figuring out where those lights hit an obstacle. So laser scanning formats essentially made their way into the drone world by having 3D data exported as, as point clouds. Now, the important thing to understand here is that point, point clouds from a drone aren't necessarily exactly the same as point clouds from, from a laser scan. Now, obviously, if you used a laser scanner on top of a drone or a LiDAR on top of a drone, then you would get a point cloud from the drone, which is essentially equivalent to a laser scanner based point cloud. But when we refer to point clouds from a drone, typically, we are actually referring to dense point clouds, which are created using the process of photogrammetry, which is the process of putting these images together to create 3D models and 3D point clouds and exporting them uh, to the end customer or to the end user. Now, I've made a whole video on photogrammetry, so if you want to go check that out after this video, feel free. But essentially, point clouds are formats created by drones in which you have essentially a set of points in 3D space, and there is some information on each one of these points. It could be the color, the value of the pixel in that 3D space. And that essentially gives you the geometry and distances between objects, and it can be used for many different applications typically to merge with laser point clouds and so on and so forth. Um, the two different formats that you will see in the dense point, point cloud realm is going to be, are going to be .xyz and .las. So the .xyz format is a very simple format where, as the name implies, you've got an X column, a Y column, and a Z column. Each one of those columns has essentially a value to tell you where the point is in 3D space. And then you might have additional columns which represent the values at that 3D space. So this is a more generic format and different software programs export .xyz separately or differently. So uh, feel free to have a look at uh, what the actual XYZ format that's been exported means. But it's a very flexible and generic format that can be used with many different applications. The other format, the .las format, is actually a bit more standardized and it does follow the .las specification, which comes from the LiDAR scanning world or the laser scanning world and allow you to essentially have the data in a format that is recognizable uh, by most of the 3D 
um, design tools, CAD tools, um, survey tools, and essentially work with that data, whether it's for measurements, whether it's for a survey, whether it's for any other engineering or design application. So that's all on point clouds. Um, and one of the things that I do want to mention here is that sometimes people confuse 3D models with point clouds. Um, 3D model is a very generic term and sometimes it could mean point clouds, but other times it could mean 3D textured meshes, which is what we're going to look at next. Right, so moving on to 3D textured mesh. So 3D textured mesh is a type of format created by drones in which essentially what happens is you've not just got a set of 3D points, but you've also got essentially these 3D points that have been joined up together through edges, vertices, faces, and essentially formed a mesh. And this mesh essentially gives you a photorealistic representation of what the site or the asset looks like. So if you think about a construction site and you want to make a 3D model of that construction site, you can essentially have that 3D model look very much like the construction site if you create a 3D mesh. And the 3D mesh can sometimes also be really useful if you want to do volumetric calculations, if you want to understand um, the geometry uh, of the space, uh, essentially. Uh, at the same time, you can also use it for other applications. So maybe you want to do a wind turbine inspection and you want to create a 3D mesh for the turbine blades to understand what it looks like. You can use it for that application too. Um, now with 3D meshes, uh, it does get a bit more complicated because you've got more than two, in fact, many different types of um, export formats, but we're gonna cover the main four in this video. So starting off with the .obj format. The .obj format is actually a very simple representation of a 3D mesh, where essentially you've got essentially a description of all the different vertices, all the different uh, triangles and polygons, and essentially all the different uh, um, vertices put together in a file with a value attached to it. So to let the 3D program understand what the mesh actually looks like. This typically is accompanied by textures so that you can not only have a mesh, but you can have the mesh with textured attached to it so that it looks and, and feels very much like the real site or the real asset. Um, so the .obj is a very interchangeable format. So you can see it in many different 3D programs. Um, you will see it in Blender. You will probably see it in other 3D animation formats. Um, and it's also very much used in the computer gaming industry. So that's the OBJ format. The .fbx format is another type of format that can be used to store 3D textured meshes. And this format is actually developed by Autodesk. So with this format, the aim for Autodesk has always been to be able to have this useful from a 3D animation and a 3D effects point of view. So lots of different software programs like Maya and other 3D animation programs support .fbx and are able to work with .fbx. The next format is the .dxf format. So .dxf format, once again, is a format very heavily used in the Autodesk and AutoCAD environments. And they are more focused towards engineering design and architecture applications. So anytime you see a .dxf format, you're probably looking at uh, exporting to uh, an Autodesk or an AutoCAD environment for engineers to work with that 3D model. Um, and another format that I'm just going to give a mention here is the .rcp format, which is also very much used in the Autodesk and Revit environments. And this allow, also allows for engineers and designers to work on that data in their own, um, in their own realm of software. And then last but not the least, you've got the .plyy format. And this is once again a very um, more, more sort of generic format created by the Stanford community. It is also used heavily on the design and engineering side of things, uh, but it's less common than some of the Autodesk formats that I mentioned before. So that sums up some of the formats that are available for the 3D textured mesh. And hopefully you understand that the 3D textured mesh is quite different to the 3D point cloud, even though the sometimes in our vernacular, we do refer to both of them as 3D models. But if you really want it to be technical, it's good to say 3D textured mesh, and it's good to say 3D dense point cloud. We want to make sure that the end customer understands what they're getting as the deliverable and how they can work with it in their own software. Right, so moving on to the next format, a 2D ortho mosaic. So a 2D ortho mosaic, or sometimes also known as an ortho, 
is essentially lots of different images that you've taken with a drone uh, in a nadir position, that is from a top-down camera view, that have been stitched up into essentially one single image. Now this one single image essentially involves correcting all of the lens distortions and all of the position errors that you might have as you're flying the drone and taking the data, but allows for an end output that can be very much accurate with respect to distances between objects, the scale of objects, and can in fact be overlaid on some of the commonly used mapping platforms. So 2D Auto Mosaic is, is sort of like stitching up all of these smaller images into one scale corrected and distortion corrected image that can be overlaid. Um, the two very common formats for 2D, 2D Auto Mosaic are .tiff and .kml. So let's look at them one by one. The .tiff format is essentially a format that actually comes from computer graphics. So it's uh, used for many different things, but you can think of the .tiff format as essentially a way to store information in a grid of cells. And each cell in this 2D plane stores a, a value, and that value represents some information. So um, without going into too much detail, the .tiff format is used quite widely in computer graphics, um, supported by quite a few different programs, and it can be used for a lot of the GIS applications. So normally when we see 2D authors being exported into .tiff, it's generally to integrate with a GIS application, something like QGIS or ArcGIS at the back end, and they are able to read this format, read all those cells that I just mentioned, and do something interesting with the data, and allow the end customer to overlay other, other maps and layers to figure out what they're trying to figure out with that drone data. Um, and then the next format is essentially the .kml format. So the .kml format is a relatively new format developed by Google. And this format allows you to store the same 2D author mosaic, but in a way that is essentially um, mappable to Google's Google Maps. So essentially you can overlay the 2D author mosaic on Google Maps, and you're able to essentially cross compare what exists on your Google map versus your drone map, and essentially export that and send that to your end customer. So that would be um, another format that's important to, to keep an eye on. Right, so moving on to another type of data, which is the 2D DEM, or 2D Digital Elevation Model. Right, so this particular format uh, is also a bit subtle, it does come in similar exports as the 2D author mosaic, namely .tiff and .kml, but the important thing here is to understand that the data encoded in this format is very different. So unlike the 2D author mosaic, which is essentially a photorealistic, scale accurate, um, scale invariant um, um, way of looking at the data you've captured with your drone, the 2D elevation map is actually looking at what are the heights or elevation uh, in every single uh, cell in a 2D set of cells that you've captured with your drone. So if you imagine capturing a certain site with your drone, obviously that site has a certain elevation profile, more true for hilly areas than flat areas. And what essentially the DEM allows you to do is that it allows you to construct a 2D representation of that site where each cell in that 2D plane is representing the height value in that particular plane. So I'm illustrating this with, uh, with some of these graphics here, but basically the idea is that you have a cell in the image that represents the height of the area encoded in that image. You can sort of think of this like GSD, if you've come across GSD before, where you have every pixel in the drone image encoding an area on the surface of the Earth. This is similar to that, but only that you have your cell of the image, not of the drone image, but the cell of the output format image encoding an area of the height of the, of the Earth in that point. Um, and this can be very useful if you're trying to figure out uh, what are the different elevation profiles uh, on, in a hilly area or even on a, on a slope um, and it can be very helpful to, um, to architects to understand the elevation profile for urban planners, for designers. Um, and it is once again supported by many different third-party programs, everything from QGIS, ArcGIS to other GIS software packages. 
and .tiff is the most commonly uh, used format for the DEM side of things. Um, they're also sometimes referred to as GeoTIFF or referred to as GeoTIFF plus world map files. You'll see some of that vocabulary when it comes to the digital elevation models. Um, so digital elevation models is again um, a very commonly used format, sometimes not as a drone output but also as a drone input because if you want to, f if you want to plan a drone follow flight you need to know what the height of the area looks like and sometimes you will find that you're importing these files into your flight planning app to be able to get the right heights. Right, moving on to the last format for this particular video, and that is essentially inspection reports. So inspection reports are essentially done in a .pdf format. Now, obviously, that is a very generic format used around the world for many different use cases. But generally, what we see for inspection reports is that you've got your data arranged in a way where you've got all of the images with all the annotations marked up and they're easily available in a PDF report with links back to the software platform that was used. That's becoming somewhat of a standard as well, but we, I think we're still far from having um, a very standardized format for inspection reports uh, in the drone industry, but we hope that with time we'll probably get there and we'll have a standardized format to have all of our inspection reports in. So. That's pretty much it. Hopefully this video gave you a sense for five of the most common um, data exports in the drone industry. Everything from point clouds, 3D textured meshes, uh, 2D auto mosaics, 2D elevation maps, and finally the inspection reports. There are many more formats that I haven't covered in this video. Everything from contour lines to vegetation indexes to thermal maps, which are actually not too different from 2D authos. Uh, but I think that I will keep that for a later video. Um, if you have any questions with respect to how you found this particular video and any other formats that you've encountered that aren't super clear, feel free to leave a comment in the comments box. Thanks so much for watching. We are always appreciative of you watching our videos and sharing the knowledge. I think if we share this knowledge with more and more people, our industry just grows and we all benefit. So thanks so much for watching. Give us a like if you like this video. We'll see you in the next video for Knowledge Hub. Thank you.